Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now recently I did a video about putting Windows on the Raspberry Pi 4. Of course, the Raspberry Pi uses an ARM-based processor, not an Intel or an, uh, an AMD processor. And this of course is in the context of uh, Apple moving away from Intel-powered uh, Macs to Macs powered using Apple Silicon. And inside of Apple Silicon, of course, is an ARM-based CPU. So the question is, what can Microsoft do to make Windows on ARM truly succeed? Well, if you want to find out more, please well, let me explain. OK, so we'll start with a bit of a public health warning. This really is much more of a, an opinion piece video. If you prefer the tutorials and all that stuff, then tune into the next video. But this one is really me with a kind of a thought about what Microsoft and Qualcomm can do to make Windows on ARM truly succeed. OK, so let's start with Apple, not with Microsoft or Qualcomm. The first thing that Apple did when they announced their move away from Intel Macs to Macs using Apple's own silicon was they released this developer's transition kit. And it's a Mac mini with an ARM-based Apple processor in it. And they're selling it, certainly in terms of uh, Apple's pricing, they're selling it quite cheaply. Now, if we look at Microsoft's attempt to move Windows over to ARM, what have we got? Well, we've got the Surface Pro X, that runs Windows on ARM. It's doing pretty well. It's got x86 emulation in it. It's got a Windows subsystem for Linux in it. It looks and feels like a normal Windows installation. However, it's very expensive. And there are a few other companies that make laptops and things with for Windows uh, on ARM. But what Microsoft has not done is found a way of getting a cheap developer kit out there. Now, if Microsoft want Windows on ARM to succeed, it mustn't start with these $1,500 laptops and say, hey, look, it must start with something much, much cheaper that can draw developers into the ecosystem so that they can then go ahead and port their software. Because when people see these ARM laptops, the first question they ask is, does it run everything I need? And then when they hear, yes, it does, because there's x86 emulation, so on, they say, well, does it run it quickly? So really what you want is native ARM apps compiled and ready for Windows on ARM. Now, when we look at the prices of small computers, for example, like a, a Chrome box, for example, or uh, an Intel Nook, the next unit of computing, or even Apple's transition kit itself, it's very clear that you can make a small box that's got an ARM-based processor in it, it's got a decent amount of memory, it's got fast storage, including the buses and you know the actual storage itself, SSD or whatever it is that they're gonna put in there, a reasonable amount of that storage, and then output for HDMI, for sound, for USB, for all that kind of stuff. And that can be done between somewhere of $300 and $500. So if Microsoft and Qualcomm are serious about getting Windows on ARM into the mainstream, they have to make one of these boxes. It's an absolute necessity. And the fact they haven't done so far is mind boggling to me. Apple did it on the first day announced it. Hey, get this transition kit. This will help you port the software. Microsoft answer seems to be, hey, buy this $1,500 laptop and that might help you. This is not what we need. We need a box that you can get just about everywhere on Amazon and in all the popular uh, retail outlets so that someone who wants to do Windows development, someone who wants to take their software and move it over to uh, the uh, Windows ARM can get into the low barrier of entry. Now, a barrier of entry really is the problem. If I've got to pay thousands of dollars to do something, I'm not going to do it. I'll say, well, I'm happy with the PC that I bought. I can run the code on there. I can compile it on there. I can test it on there. I can profile it on there. I can do everything I need to do on there. Why should I bother with this whole other ecosystem that you're trying to get me into? However, if I can actually find a way into that ecosystem at a minimal cost, then I might say, well, there are still going to be some customers there. Maybe it would be good for my business to move over because maybe more people will buy it. And now suddenly it's a whole different uh, picture for me as a developer and for Microsoft and Qualcomm. So really, Microsoft and Qualcomm, if anybody is listening from these companies, you've got to get one of these developer boxes out there. Maybe you're only going to be selling it at minimal profit. Maybe you're only going to be selling it uh, as a kind of a throwaway commodity, but you've got to get them out there because if you're serious about selling the chips, Qualcomm, then you've got to get people to buy it. Microsoft, if you're serious about people buying Surface hardware, then you've got to get people to start buying it. And they're only going to do that if the software is there at the performance they want, at the support they want, at the price they want, 
in that actual kit that they're buying. The thing that Microsoft and Qualcomm need to remember is the default setting for everybody doing any kind of Windows development is Windows on x86 or x86-64. The default isn't Windows on ARM. And if they're serious about it, they've got to switch that default so that it becomes a serious question to people. Which should I be developing for first? Windows x86 or Windows on ARM? Until that question becomes serious, then there's never going to be enough momentum to take this whole thing in a new direction. And what's going to be funny is that Apple are going to be way ahead of the game because they've got developers on board and then Microsoft and Qualcomm other people are scratching their heads saying, but we've got ARM chips, why didn't it work for us? We've got high performance this and we've got, because you haven't brought out a developer kit that developers can get hold of easily and freely so that they can actually do their part to move this ecosystem over. Okay, that's it. That was a bit of an opinion of piece, but really it, it, I think it's so important and I hope that they hear this message. Well, my name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos and all the other kind of videos I do, tutorials and tech explanations, then why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. And there already are kind of, uh, is launch the church 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 church